Herbal hair oil is not only effective at boosting natural hair growth, but it could create thicker hair, reduce hair loss, and treat a dry or flaky scalp. This recipe is what I've been using to keep my scalp in tip-top shape, building a solid foundation for healthy and resilient hair. Hair oiling has been a practice in India for growing long, thick, and healthy hair. With strong roots in 5,000-year-old Ayurvedic medicine, herbal hair oil has proven to be effective at growing stronger, healthier hair. With its rejuvenating properties, studies have shown that calendula help to increase collagen production, resulting in healthier scalps and thicker hair growth. If you've seen any of my other DIY recipes, you have probably seen hibiscus and marshmallow root quite a bit, and that's because they are both effective at thickening hair, treating dandruff, and preventing split ends. And because I have curly hair, it helps me to glide through my hair in the detangling process, and it's just pretty much been a godsend. Slippery Elm contains tannins that combine with proteins in the skin, and this helps to protect the skin on our scalps and promote healing. It's excellent for improving different inflammatory scalp conditions that can cause excessive hair loss. Fenugreek is one of those powerful seeds that helps to really strengthen the hair, and the reason why is because it's rich in vitamins, calcium, iron, and protein. In turn, that strengthens our hair and reduces hair loss, resulting in longer, thicker hair. Next up, we'll be using this Ayurvedic blend that contains moringa leaf, Indian gooseberry, cassia, and kapoor katri. This is in powder form, so a little bit goes a very long way. High in omega-3 fatty acids and protein, moringa works to protect, moisturize, and strengthen hair. It's high in zinc, which is helpful in keratin production, a building block for healthy hair. Amla, aka Indian gooseberry, adds resiliency to the hair, and amla contains calcium and tannins, and that protects hair from sun and heat damage. Native to China, the Himalayas, and Ethiopia. Kaporka tree reduces hair loss and promotes thicker hair growth. Cassia comes from a plant native to India and it's been nicknamed neutral henna due to its similar benefits but it's actually not the same thing. Cassia is supposed to be good for strengthening and thickening the hair without dyeing your hair color like henna. Using authentic Jamaican black castor oil, this brand Sunny Isle is the only one that actually sources black castor beans from Jamaican farmers and is processed the traditional way for the most effective results. It's also infused with rosemary extract for an extra hair growth boost. Avocado oil is excellent at deeply penetrating the hair shaft rather than just sitting on top. It repairs the hair from the inside out and protects it from UV damage. Jojoba oil is effective at dissolving sebum on the scalp, unclogging the hair follicles, allowing hair to grow freely through. Grapeseed oil is a lightweight oil that is suitable for absolutely any hair type, from fine to thick, and has strengthening abilities due to its high level of antioxidants, vitamin E, and omegas. Avocado oil and grapeseed oil will be serving as the oils that penetrate the hair shaft, while the jojoba oil will create a protective barrier on the hair. I'm adding extra avocado oil to fully cover the herbs, but you could use any other lightweight oil to complete this step. Using the double boiler method, we're going to speed up the infusion process with heat. Heat extracts the herbal and aromatic benefits the absolute fastest. I brought the water to a boil, turned the heat down to a gentle simmer, and then placed the jar in the pot to speed up the infusion process. If you don't mind waiting a longer amount of time, I will show you guys the cold infusion method next. Yeah. When the oil is ready, use a fine mist strainer to extract the oil. Because I used mostly whole herbs, there aren't much sediments left after straining just once, but feel free to pair your strainer with a cheesecloth or strain several times to get a much smoother oil. You could reuse your herbs two to three times before throwing them out. Keep in mind that the more you reuse them though, the shorter the shelf life of the final oil. For cold infusion, follow the same exact steps as before, but instead of adding heat, allow it to naturally infuse for four to six weeks in a dark cupboard. The longer you wait, the stronger the herbal infusion will become. Throughout the weeks, be sure to shake the jar every single day to assist the infusion.
Depending on how many times you wash your hair in one week, this is a regimen I follow to keep my hair super healthy. Once a week is more than enough unless you prefer to wash your hair more than once every seven days. You can use this oil anywhere you want to see thicker, longer hair growth, for example, your eyelashes, eyebrows, and you can even use it to strengthen and grow your nails. The only place I would caution you against using this oil anywhere you don't want to grow thicker hair like your legs, armpits, or bikini line, definitely don't use this oil in those places unless you're going for super hairy Chewbacca vibes. I have a video showing how I use my herbal oil when my hair is curly. It's linked in the description box along with the ingredients that I use for this video. Subscribe, like, and share this video for more content and I'll see you in the next one. It's 100% possible to go from curly to straight with zero heat damage. Today, I'm sharing how to do a DIY silk press at home and my top tips for straightening your hair while preserving its natural curl pattern and integrity. And trust me, I am no stranger to heat damage. I've learned the hard way. Since learning those lessons, I understand what my hair's limits are and creating adequate heat protection starts with your wash routine before touching any heat tools. To help me straighten my curls in one pass, I'm using this Denman straightening brush. It works so much better than a fine tooth comb for the chase method and of course you could go ahead and use a fine tooth comb that also works but i find that the grip on this demon brush works better to give me the smoothest results because of how it distributes the hair before the flat iron passes over it ideally